Hi. Uh, so it's been about one year, eight months, I think. So I think I'm approaching my two year mark of having a CDF surgery from C4 to C7. Uh, thank you everybody for all of your messages, uh, updates. So life kind of sucks at the moment unrelated to ACDF. Um, my brother that has Down syndrome, we've been trying to get him into a group home. That's been fun. So there's that. Mom's still in a nursing home for late stage Alzheimer's and dad is in like assisted living because he kind of quit on life, I guess. So life has been pretty stressful since like the last two years basically, but mm, really for the last year. Um, random stuff. I've lost about 50% of my hair. I just washed it so it looks a little bit puffy, but yeah, it's kind of all gone. But it looks good right now, so I don't know what I, I'm bitching about. Um, but yeah, um, thyroid levels kind of up and down, but overall seem regulated. So I'm still on medicine. I don't think it's doing anything. Um, so yeah, that's the hair. I don't know. Ever, anything else? Okay, so spine related stuff. Um, so I've gotten additional um, referrals to orthopedic surgeons, neurosurgeons, things of that nature. I had another EMG, which is like the nerve test. Um, I'm going this week to get a flexion, I guess, like an x-ray that shows like up and down and side to side, um, as well as a CAT scan of my neck because the neurosurgeon was like, you know what, let's just see if the fusion actually is fused and that there's not something going on with that. I was like, hmm, I don't know why the other doctors didn't suggest like, you know, with all the pain I'm having recently and the issues I'm having, I don't know why nobody was like, hmm, let's um get like a moving x-ray. That would kind of be a good start. Whatever. Also, I had another MRI done of the cervical spine as well as my lumbar because I'm having just chronic pain in my lower left side. <laughs> so this is my result. So the neurosurgeon said, um, I think that the issue that you're having in terms of the left arm and the numbness spreading, as well as it kind of creeping over to the right arm, he actually said that what he saw in the MRI is that C, so I had, I had um, fusion from C4 to C7. He thinks that the issues are coming from like C2 to C4, so right above my fusion, whereas the other doctors said it was coming from below, that I would need to like fuse into the lumbar spine. <laughs> This doctor kind of looked at my whole spine and was like, yeah, you're kind of fucked. He was just like, not he didn't say it like that. He was very, he was really cool. Um, but he was just saying that he sees that the issue coming from the top of the, the fusion. Um, he also said that it, I'm just kind of unlucky because most people after surgery, if everything goes well, the adjacent segment disease usually does happen, but it usually happens like five to 10 years down the road. Mine happened four months down the road. Now, maybe I exacerbated that because of, I don't know, lifting something that I shouldn't have. Don't do that. Really listen to your doctors and don't push it. Um, so um, he said because of that and because of what he's seeing on my MRI from cervical spine all the way down the lumbar spine is, I'm kind of laughing because I'm not happy, but um, he said that it seems as though I have kind of a progressive form of degenerative dis disease because of my stenosis and luck of the draw, I guess. Um, so he's saying he can't guarantee that if I get the fusion from C3 or C4, I don't know, C2 to C4, C3 to C4, I don't know. He said, chances are that I'm probably gonna have additional surgeries and we can't guarantee when. And I said, so I'm basically gonna be fused from like spine to ass crack and he was just like I don't know we can't really predict that stuff but you probably are going to need some additional stuff going on and I was just like okay so I'm going to hold off on this for now um I'm really frustrated um I'm just really frustrated because I don't know one of my goals was not to think about my surgery and the pain and the numbness every single day but for the last two years that's been my life has been don't do this, don't do that. Oh, I'm gonna work out today because I feel good. And then I have a few days of not feeling good. Um, also now on my right side, I'm getting some numbness in my hand. I'm getting some weird numbness in my right tricep, which is kind of like what started over here. Um, and then I went for a walk 
a couple days ago as well as yesterday and I'm noticing like my feet are getting tingly I was like oh I have like I don't know maybe my I, I don't know I'm frustrated don't regret the surgery because according to all the different doctors that I'm seeing that it was necessary because you can't work your way out of yoga your way out of a, a tight spinal column so I'm not regretting that. I'm just kind of like, why hasn't any of the other doctors like suggested that the issue that I'm having is coming from above my fusion? Everyone, all the orthopedic surgeons said it's coming from below into the thoracic. And this guy was like, no. And he showed me pictures of it. Um, I have it somewhere. I was going to show you guys like my whole thing. So I don't know. I, I've got to figure out how to do that. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm kind of frustrated. You guys have asked a variety of questions and... I have to like work in a couple minutes, but I figured, hey, let's just hop on here because it was like my anniversary, sort of my anniversary yesterday. Uh, so, all right. Oh my God. So a whole bunch of questions that I have are like, is it idiopathic hypertension? Because I'm having, still having the pounding in my ears, the, the headaches. Um, the other like month ago, I would get like this vertigo. So like moving my head, I would get really dizzy. I was like, what the fuck is going on? I don't know. Um, so basically my left hand is, mm, other than my, my thumb is basically really numb. Sorry. I have like a variety of things happening here. Oh good. My client's running a little bit late. <laughs> so perfect timing. Um, so let me look back at my, I have all these alarms going off guys. It is busy as a clinician on a Monday. Whew. So yeah, um, what am I experiencing almost two years later from ACDF is I'm still having pain. Um, sleeping again is getting frustrating, especially because now it's not only just my, my cervical spine, I'm also having it in my lower back ass area. It doesn't seem like sciatica. It does seem like that, you know, there's something going on there. The guy looked at my MRI and was like, yeah, you know, that might need some work. So he's sending me to PT. He was kind of surprised that no, none of the other doctors were, um, suggested going back to PT. And I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of surprised about a variety of things that haven't been suggested. So I'm waiting to get these x-rays done. Um, I think tomorrow or Wednesday, I don't know. So I'm getting that done. I'm getting like the CAT scan and stuff, um, to kind of see like where everything is at. That way I can take all that information to physical therapy. And I think he made the request that I do cervical therapy as well as lumbar. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm having constant stiffness in like the lower part of my back, the cervical spine into, I don't know, like my trap area under my, my shoulder blades. And I am having the issue. Oh my God, I am blowing up. I am having the issue of it going down my arms now. Um, I'm trying to look at all the questions that you guys have asked before. I'm not going to be able to get to all of them just because of time. So maybe I'll make another one. I always say that. And thank you guys for constantly checking in. For those of you that have just found my channel and you've gone backwards and kind of like watched my story and all the kind words that you've said. Um, and then also like just sharing your stuff. Um, it's, it's a bumpy ride. It is a really bumpy ride and I don't regret it. But when you know you need the surgery, like when you know you can't take the pain anymore or there's a risk of paralysis, like you have to do something about it. And in my case, it was pretty bad. I just wish it would have been like one and done and not be as advanced as it seems to be, which is like the really frustrating thing. You guys have mentioned like disc replacement and um, laminectomies and things of that nature. This doctor, I suggested, oh, my doctor said I need a laminectomy and he was like, no, you need a laminectomy and a fusion if um, we're doing through the back from C2 to 4, I don't know. Um, so yeah, so recovery would be bad. I don't know. I'm almost wondering, like, should they have just done that from the beginning? He said, um, it's going to restrict my movement. All these things that I'm like, why? Why am I doing this? I, I'm turning 40 this year and I haven't had a break. Uh, I don't know if the hair falling out is, I don't know, the dermatologist called it alopecia. I don't know. I don't know. Stress, maybe. Anyway, what am I having? I'm having constant headaches, pounding in the ears. The EMG doesn't really show much change since the EMG I had before. So they're still saying that it looks like it's coming from the cervical spine. Um, not really sure about the right hand, but it could be a mixture of cervical spine as well as ulnar plus... Um, 
what is it called? Carpal tunnel? Yeah. So, um, I don't know. I don't know. In my spine, I'm still having like that grinding sensation, especially like in my lumbar area. Um, and also like the center of my back and like the, the, <laughs> the, what is it called? Oh my gosh. Thoracic spine. Um, I just feel like my discs are like on top of each other and just like tight. And I guess that's from the cervical spine being fused. I don't know. I don't know. I made all these notes and I'm kind of just like not even happy, like reading at them. What else? Oh, I started massage therapy, like deep tissue, but like medium deep tissue as well as like sort of relaxing. So I do that two hours a week. That's fucking costly. Um, so I'm doing massage therapy twice a week for two hours, or I'm sorry, once a week for two hours. And eventually I'm going to be incorporating physical therapy to that. I recommend it, but I don't know. I guess it helps like any of the muscle tension. And she's also working on like fascia. Cause I'm also like clenching my mouth a lot and that is probably pain. I'm doing this a lot. Um, what else? Oh, if I raise my arms up above my head or if I'm like playing with my hair or something, they go like hot and numb and like they hurt, but I don't know how to describe it. It's not like out of a 10, like a scale, like a pain scale up to 10. It's not like that. It's just hurts. And I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. I don't know if I'm making any sense today, guys. I think I'm rushing and I probably should have just made this a little bit later. Um, but I just want to pop something out there because I'm seeing so many people like subscribing and asking questions and just giving some feedback about what they have going on and suggestions. So I was like, you know what? I got to stop hiding because I tend to hide when I'm not doing well because I don't know when you put it out there, it's real, but it's real anyway. Um, I haven't really done much. I'm going on dates and everything, but I'm noticing I'm getting fatigued pretty quick. So if I'm like on a date or if I just even go out with my friends, like sitting at a restaurant, sitting at a bar, whatever it is for too long, I get so achy, like my neck and like my shoulders, like get really achy. I start getting a headache behind my eyes start really hurting. And I'm like, this is not fucking fun. Like I used to be able to like hang till like two, three in the morning. And now it's like, Hey, it's like 10 o'clock and I go home. Um, so that's not really fun. Haven't been drinking. Um, don't even use marijuana. I have started Wellbutrin. <laughs> I've started Wellbutrin uh, because of all the shit going on with my family, some depression. And I also done Trazodone to help me sleep at night because of my insomnia. I feel like I'm just like on pills, but I'm hoping to get off of it at some point because maybe I'll be able to get back into flying. Um, the Wellbutrin is cool because it makes me not eat at all, but I think from not eating, I'm not really losing weight. I'm just looking older. It's just weird. I don't know. So I have to like make myself eat. <laughs> I feel like this is just a bitch sesh. I don't know. So anyway, I started at Wellbutrin, having tightness my whole spine. That really sucks. I'm getting leg issues and feet issues. And I think that's because of the lumbar area, but possibly because of cervical. Who knows? I don't know. I don't know. I made a whole bunch of notes, but you guys get the gist that right now I'm not a happy camper, but I'm still trying to be positive and work is amazing because it helps me like distract. Although when I have clients that have similar issues of pain um, or if they've gone through something similar and they're struggling, it's like I can totally relate. And the last thing I want to do is give them bullshit like it'll be OK or look at the positive or blah, 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 because I can't bullshit people, but I do have to say like, you know, the attitude does help make a difference in terms of being a little bit more positive, but yeah, <laughs> I, I don't know where I'm going. So I think I'm going to end it by saying, yeah, the surgery was good and glad it happened because I was pretty bad in one area and that word of paralysis really freaked me out, but now I'm going to need additional things probably from the base of my school lower, which is going to suck. And I was like, am I going to be like in a wheelchair at some point? Because when you talk about um, surgery that high up, that kind of regulates everything. So it is kind of scary, which is why I'm not really ready to do anything. And I do know that when you leave nerve issues untreated for a while, that it can become permanent. Um, but I, I mean, it's cold. It's still cold. Um, I can move it. I can't feel it at all. Um, so I do drop some things at times, but I have, I have like strength ish on it. 
Um, and then the right hand just gets annoying, but it's like interesting. It's like when I try to forget about it and I try to like do other things, I get the zap or I get this that kind of like brings me back into my body. So trying to do some cognitive restructuring and breathing and relaxation stuff. But if you know what it's like when you are experiencing these things, you can't just not pay attention to the pain or not pay attention to the fatigue. Um, it is a mind trip. The depression is real. There's a lot of comor mor bleh, comorbidity between post-surgical, especially spinal surgery um, and PTSD, sometimes called CPTSD, which is complex post-traumatic stress disorder instead of like acute um, post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, and I'm kind of like learning about this and teaching my clients about it. I know some general things, but it's not really my area of expertise. So there are some components of the, the PTSD, especially when you're very hyper-focused on your body. It's almost like that hypochondriac kind of sensation, but you really have things going on and your fears and worries are legit. Um, so in addition to the comorbidity of potential CPTSD, complex PTSD, you also are experiencing potential anxiety because of that hyper-awareness and fear of damaging something because the reality is it, it can happen. Um, some people are really lucky. Like I have watched ton of, tons of videos and people are back to doing things and you know, they're skydiving and they're diving and they're doing all these things. And I wish I was like them, but I'm not. And I'm so scared to test my luck by like going horseback riding or doing the things that like the doctor is like, just try it. And if something breaks, then we'll fix it. I'm like, mm, no, no, not going to do that but I had to do something. So I've been walking more, but while walking, I get the numbness and that freaks me out. I'm like, Kim, just focus on your walk. Look at the pretty bird. <laughs> Yay. Um, so trying to do something to stay out of your head is helpful. Um, but I'm not in a great place. Uh, and if you have been here and you've gone to a dark place, I feel you. And sometimes suicidal thinking happens when you're in that chronic place of pain and fear um, and keep in mind just because you are thinking some suicidal things um, we call it passive I don't know why I'm getting into it like a therapy thing here but it's like it's, it's kind of a passive it can be fleeting and sometimes we just need that to escape but you have to really be mindful that if you're thinking of doing it if you're you know planning something you're thinking of how to do it that's when I really suggest that you get some help. It's more than just thinking like, oh, if I wasn't here, I wouldn't have this pain. Or I wonder if, who would, like, it is okay to have that every now and again. But if you stay stuck in that place of feeling like a burden to people and not reaching out and you're finding that you're getting more and more isolated and it's becoming more tempting, please, please seek out some help. Um, whether it's the national, um, the crisis hotline, uh, it's a suicide hotline if it's a friend, a family member, or a doctor. Um, it seems like the answer sometimes, but it's not because you will miss the days that are good. And I know that it's kind of like that teeter-totter between balancing like the good days and the not good days. But as a clinician, um, it is part of my background to kind of like try to save people. But being in the situation at times, like I know how real it gets and... I know sometimes we just struggle for an answer and we struggle for relief and we go to pain doctors, we get put on meds and it's like, pff, how exhausting is this? And I've been dealing with this for about like two, two and a half years and it's been like my life that I want something different and I guess it's my responsibility to try to find things. So my work is amazing because it helps me focus on other people and helping them um, and it gives me like a mental and emotional break of like what's happening in my world with like family and personal um but yeah please please hang on if you're if you're feeling like you're in a scary place you're not alone and I know that these things are so cliche but you're not alone um people don't want to see you harm yourself or take yourself out or unalive yourself that's like the new term um so it's okay every now and again to escape into that daydream just to kind of take a, a mental break but please don't stay there please don't do anything about it um, I don't really have the best answers when it comes to what's going to get you out of that place. But maybe like together on this journey, like we can help support each other and 
see what's next. Maybe they are coming up with new innovations. Um, sometimes insurance won't pay for it, but people are talking about like stem cells and everything else. So where I'm at right now, yes, the pain sucks. Yes, the limitations suck and the sleepless nights and the mental anguish, it sucks. But I have to be realistic and make sure I'm looking through the lens that's beyond the pain. And that stuff is good. That stuff is worthwhile. Um, and I am hopeful. I am still hopeful that something good will come of all of this. And eventually if I decide to get another surgery, we'll see. I can't predict the future, but I know that in the right now on the days that I'm not in pain, I'm like, oh, that's, let's keep doing this. Like life is okay. Like blah, blah, blah. And the days that suck, it's like, fuck. Or when I'm having a good day and I'm out doing things and I'm like, yes, break out of my comfort zone, like life. And this is what it's like. And then it's like, fuck, now I'm hurting. Now I have the headache and the pounding in the head and all this stuff. And people can like see the pain behind your eyes and they like feel bad for you. And you're like, oh, am I a party pooper? Like, like those days suck. But I, I, I really try in the back of my head to like have stuff on my calendar and just do little things that inject happiness and purpose in my life. I have a cat which makes like things really interesting because I care more about my cat and other people at times when I'm in those like tough spots that it's like, fuck, I can push past this. It's, it'll be okay. Um, <clears throat> so if you can get yourself something that's gonna have you think outside of yourself, I know that you don't wanna always like hold on to like guilting yourself to stay safe, but sometimes anything is better than nothing so find yourself something find yourself something that you enjoy um because i'm rushing and i have work on my mind and my clients running a little bit late um i know that i haven't answered all of your questions but i just want to put something out there would be like hi i'm here i'm like losing all my hair but it's whatever it kind of i kind of look like i have an okay hair day but i know when i rewatch these videos i'm like mm, bleh. <laughs> um so welcome to my world. Um, I think next time, if you guys are asking any specific questions, I'm actually going to write them down. Um, cause I know I try to like message you all back individually. Like, Hey, hope your surgery went well. Hope you're doing okay. If you guys are asking if I checked something out, I like let you guys know, but if there really is something that I can help you guys with, I don't know, message me. I know some of you guys have messaged me on my like work accounts on like Facebook or Instagram or TikTok. Um, and I thank you for reaching out, but I do not always check like the Facebook messages and stuff. And when people are like asking very specific questions or actually calling my work line, if you can respect the boundary um, of not just reaching out without interacting with me and me giving you the okay. Um, I know that sometimes we get into this place of like um, frantic energy of like, oh my God, somebody relates to me. I want to, I want to reach out. I, I need to like talk to them and make sure that like, I'm not going crazy. Like I know that feeling and talking to somebody that has been through something very similar and is still having some symptoms. Like we want information and we want to connect. So I totally get it. And I appreciate you guys taking this step to reach out. Um, but it does sometimes get overwhelming. And then I notice that you guys will some, not all of you, but some people have gotten very angry that I haven't <clears throat> called or texted back or messaged back, but that is like my work stuff. So I do try to keep it separate. Somehow it's linked. I, I don't know how it's linked, but um, if you need to get in touch, please message here first and make sure that I give the okay. Um, but I'm gonna end here because I think my client's getting ready to like start. So <sighs> yeah, it's been like one year, eight months. So maybe I'll keep making updates. It's probably gonna venture a little bit away from the ACDF surgery because I feel like I'm like always hitting the repeat button. And, um, I don't know, you just, unless you guys just like, you know, me being here talking to myself and it's like, ah, there she is. <laughs> um, so I hope you're doing okay. I hope that you're safe. I hope that you find some relief. And if you're struggling with what to do, uh, trust your gut. I know that fear can really confuse us, but I, I think you're going to know if and when you need to take the next step of either surgery, medication, um, pain management or even therapy. I don't know. So from my house to yours, it's Monday. Oh, uh, what is it? Monday, April 25th. Yeah. I can't believe it's already almost May. Like, what the fuck? It's almost 2023. I'm almost 40. I want to be 40 this July, people. 
I started talking to you all or making this when I was like, what, 37? And I was like, oh. <laughs> so have a good day. I'll talk to you all later. If you have any specific questions, message me on here. And I'm going to do my due diligence to actually make a list of everything that you guys come up with and maybe make a video or like do a live. Would you guys like to do a live? I did it once and it was like really weird. I don't know how to use YouTube that much. So I'm gonna go make some TikToks in a little bit tonight. Uh, but I'm happy to interact with you guys and thank you for reaching out and checking in. So mwah, mwah. from my house to yours, have a beautiful day and a beautiful week and good luck. Bye.